Hey guys, Helen Reed is the Lord of Grey Water Watch and the father of Mira and Jojen Reed. The head of House Reed, he is a loyal vessel of House Stark, ruling over the bug filled lands of the Neck and the Cranog Men. At the end of Robert's Rebellion, he accompanied the Dirt Stark to the Tower of Joy in the Red Mountains of Dorne, in an attempt to rescue Lena Stark. He and Ed were the only survivors of the showdown between the Northmen and the remaining Kingsguard loyal to House Targaryen. Reed first met his liege lords at the Great Tourney at Harrenhal, when he was a young man. While taking in the magnificence of the tourney, three squires, all larger than him as Cranog men are known to be shorter and smaller than most men in Westeros, started to beat and curse him as a frog eater, until Lyanna Stark came to his defense. There he eventually met with the rest of the members of House Stark present, Brandon, Nedard and Benjen. Later in the tourney, the Knight of the Laughing Tree, which was probably Lyanna herself, defended Reed's honor by jousting and defeating the knights of the squires mentioned, and the only prize the mysterious knight asked for was the defeated knights teach their squires honor. Reed would later tell his tourney experiences to his two children. We first heard of him in Season 3. While traveling in the gift, Bran and Jojen talk about Helen Reed and his relation to Ned Stark. Jojen remembers that when he told his father about his vision, so what happened to Ned Stark, it was the first time he saw his father cry. Tower. Many fans expected Helen to be of a big importance in the final season, because he is after all the only living man who did not learn the secret about John's true parentage, via visions or via someone's diary, but he was actually there at the Tower of Joy, witnessing it happening and keeping the secret this entire time. However, season 8 was a rushed, only 6 episode season, and there was simply no time for any of this, but Helen Reed might have appeared in the Game of Thrones finale. Tyrion's trial was attended by lords and ladies from all Westeros, and there were a few unknown faces that we got to see. New faces are Prince of Dorne, Lord from the Stormlands and Lord from the North, all unnamed, but their clothes give it away from where they are coming, except for this guy. There's a speculation that this guy right here is Helen Reed. Sandwiched between Edmure Tully and Samuel Tarly was a mysterious new face. This new figure conspicuously doesn't have any sigils on clothing, but he's not dressed as a northerner nor a southerner, which leads some to wonder if this might be the long-awaited character of Helen Reed, Jojen and Mira Reed's father. The house Reed sits in the neck of the Westerosi map, right between the north and south. He wore a distinctive piece of cloth over his shoulder, as well as the leather of embraces, and it's similar to the one that was worn by Helen Reed in Bran's vision, and even their swords seem to be similar. Costumes are never an accident on Game of Thrones, and those vembraces appear to have the same axe across them. The way both men hold their swords is also similar. However, there's no official confirmation about this, and we can just hope that the showrunners will eventually reveal the names of everyone who attended the Great Council. As of now, what we officially know about his character is that he's an unnamed lord, who took part in the Great Council of 305 AC to determine Tyrion Lannister's fate, as well as the new king of the Seven Kingdoms. Along with the rest of the council, he accepts the ascension of Bran Stark as the king of the Andals, the Rhoynar and the First Man. In my opinion, this unnamed lord in greenish letter was Helen Reed. In both the books and the show, the character of Helen Reed fought alongside Ned Stark at the Tower of Joy when Jon Snow was born, and as the only living person in Westeros who was actually there at the Tower when Jon was born, he will definitely play a bigger role in the books than he did on the show. I believe he has some actual proof and is keeping it in secret, until the time is right. When I think about it, if this in fact was Helen, then I don't know if I'm actually glad it was him or disappointed. Howland should have played a much bigger role in the show, especially so because he's the only living man who was actually there with Ned and witnessed John's birth and knows everything. Also, I don't know how to feel about him agreeing for Bran Stark to be the king. On the one hand, he's the reason Bran became the Three-Eyed Raven, because he sent him children Jojen and Mira to take him to the Three-Eyed Raven cave. Without them, Bran would be dead, so I guess it does make sense he'd want Bran as a king. On the other hand, Howland knows John is the rightful heir, and yet doesn't speak or suggests him to be the king. This does not annoy me as much as Sam not suggesting Jon Snow for a king. A man he knows is the best choice to lead them, a man he knows is the rightful heir, and a man so good he's naming his first child after him. Sam now in the season 8 finale all of a sudden forgot his words from the season 8 premiere, when he was convincing Jon that he should take the Iron Throne and rule the Seven Kingdoms, because he's its rightful heir and the best choice. However, while Sam kind of forgot about all of that, Holland, on the other hand probably doesn't know that everyone knows the truth behind Josh's true parentage, so he doesn't bring his name up for vote. He knew Ned did not want anyone to know, and held a secret about it during John's entire life, so he as Ned Stark's most loyal friend kept the secret. That's my take on it. I believe we just saw Holland read in the Game of Thrones finale. 
there are a few other things most fans missed from the finale that I'd like to talk about, starting with the changes in the opening credits. The season and the opening credits have been changing to reflect the important events to have happened, for example the floor turning into ice as the army of the dead advanced south, and we got to see some changes one last time in the series finale. We saw cracks on the map floor in the last episode, and we could see the same in the opening credits. Additionally, the Lannister sigil was missing from the throne room, as Danny successfully overthrew Cersei Lannister. Then we have a nice little callback in Danny's victory speech she gave to her armies. Danny made a reference to her season 6 speech to the Thraki. After capturing King's Landing, Danny spoke with her army, and she told the Thraki that they killed her armies in Iron Souls, tore down their stone houses, and gave her the Seven Kingdoms. Back in season 6, she gave a speech to the Thraki, and here's what she said. Every call who ever lived chose three blood riders to fight beside him and guard his way. But I am not a call. I will not choose three blood riders. I choose you all. I will ask more of you than any call has asked his Kalazar. Will you ride the wooden horses across the Black Salt Sea? Will you kill my enemies in their iron suits and tear down their stone houses? Will you give me the Seven Kingdoms the gift Khal Drogo promised me before the Mother of the Mountains? The Dothraki cheered back then just as they are cheering now in the finale. It was a nice callback, but also a reminder that the writing has gone really downhill. The same Dothraki are all her blood riders, then their Khalees is killed, and they just pack up and leave, like it's not their business, when in fact all thousands of them have sacred WoW as blood riders to avenge their Khalees' death. Instead of killing Jon Snow, ravaging and pillaging Westeros while avenging Danny, they just disappear, very much how the quality writing disappeared from the final season. In the finale, so disappointing, there was this one scene that I really liked, the parallel between Jon Snow and Ned Stark. Tyrion tried his best to explain why it was so important for Jon to eliminate the biggest threat to the people. However, Jon did not want to listen to treason Tyrion is suggesting, he stays loyal to his queen, and goes on to leave the room. That's when Tyrion mentioned Jon's sisters. He told Jon that his sisters did not bend the knee, and have no intention to do so, and Danny would execute them in the future, and that's when Jon decided to kill Danny. That's when he realized he would have to kill Danny if he wanted to see his sisters live. This scene was similar to the scene between Varys and Ned Stark. Ned was rotting in dungeons and he did not care about his life. Varys suggested that he kept the information about Joffrey's parentage a secret and instead say that he's a lying traitor he would be given a chance to take the Black and join the Night's Watch, but the honorable Ned Stark said no. That's when Varys asked Ned what of your daughter's life, my lord. Both Ned and Jon took tough decisions to make sure that their family survived, sacrificing honor and loyalties for the greater good of their family. Next we have is the Azra High prophecy kind of being fulfilled. According to legends, Azra High joy sword through his wife, Nisa Nisa's heart to create the Lightbringer, which was the Red Sword of Heroes. Many fans were expecting this to happen as they considered Jon Snow to be Azra High, and that would make Danny Targaryen Nisa Nisa. However, the scene did not perfectly match the prophecy, as Nissa's Nissa's death resulted in the creation of Lightbringer, which was used to defeat the darkness, while Danny's death ended the darkness that would have spread across the world, if Danny had continued doing what she did in King's Landing. There are many more nice callbacks and easter eggs the finale had, but these are the most notable ones. For example, it's also interesting that Sir Brienne of Tar becomes Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, just like her ancestor Sir Duncan the Tall. Sansa's crown, highly resembling Cersei's crown, is also quite interesting. Throughout the series, we have seen Sansa trying to replicate Cersei's style, and it represented how she was learning from Cersei, and we got one last example of it, as the crown that was placed on Sansa's head was similar to the crown we saw after Cersei became the queen. Please let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comment section down below. Do you think this unnamed lord was Helen Reed, or was it just some random lord from the Reach or the Riverlands? And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!